Welcome to We Choose to Thrive. This is our interview series with women who have decided to rise above the abuse, no matter what kind of abuse it was, of their past, and to live rich, full lives. We hope you will enjoy our interview series. Good morning, Patty. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. I'm so excited to be talking with you this morning. Uh, it's wonderful, and I so appreciate that you've you've decided to participate in our We Choose to Thrive series. It's it's more about all of us as as women standing up and sharing our voices and letting our voices be heard to to share with those that are just beginning a journey of trying to figure out why their life is the way it is. Um, maybe they're not happy with where they are. And to to show that there is a way and the journey that each one of us have have had to take. So it's a matter of choosing to thrive. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that's what I had written earlier about some of my struggles I had gone through. And this time it was like it was a new step, but a very important step that I hadn't looked at. And so I was I was a little leery. What did I have anything new to say? And yet this time I felt like I went in deeper and cleared out deeper in a way that was able to show how beautiful the growth is when we come out of these ugly things. You are so right. I know for myself that in writing my story, it was like a cleansing took place because as we write, we start to put together things that we never really took the time to really consider. And the picture comes together in a different way but when we write and share our story out to the world, what happens is like we release the story and make it to where it doesn't hold the power over us as so much anymore. We're not victims anymore. Right. right. And before I had gotten rid of that victim mode to that point, but I had to go back to when I was six years old and decisions I had made then right? And how, because of what was going on. Yes, and we do make decisions even at such a young age. We very much like, do. Yeah. Why? 56 <laughs> years later, I'm still going on those sides. <laughs> Why am I still afraid of those things? They are not there anymore. Right. And it's now it is a very, um, I don't want to say cleansing in a sense, but it's a very clearing it is. of all those emotions. And now when I see those kind of, if, yo, that fear is like, no, I got rid of you. I know, just check it. <laughs> and, it wants to come back in because it's been a part of me, but I am strong enough now to stand firm that this is where I am. That's beautiful. And it just, and it, just it's, it goes away quickly. And it's, it's like it, it takes more of the fear with it because you're not going to be allowed in. <laughs> right. So tell us, tell our listeners what the story of your past is that has made you the woman that you are today? Well, in just a few Just minutes. in a brief story. Don't go into I don't know. <laughs> well, I know. Well, it's just I really wasn't aware of it and really what was going on until the fact that my dad fondled me when I was 14 was just always I felt ugly, unworthy. And there were times when I could go, I could teach, I could do, I win awards and stuff like that in my career, but there still was something inside my core that just didn't feel right. And so then I started looking at all the illnesses I'd had, how I hated myself, I hated being a woman, I had endometriosis so we couldn't have children, autoimmune disease with my thyroid, I may have had that genetically in there. But I've taken it over the edge with the Hashimoto's because of those ugly feelings. Even February, here we are talking in February, <laughs> 2018. But that used to be a horrible month for me because everything was so ugly. I was, here it is the month of love and I hate myself, every part of it. And it's like I would tear my heart out and pull it out. And then by the end of the month, I'd put most many good things, the good things back in, but there were like holes inside. And so over time, I learned not to tear myself apart so much. But now when February comes, it's, it's a love month. I love myself. I love others. There's a, so many people I've been able to help and I want to help. I just, it is a month of love. 
and appreciation for who I am as a woman. I have my own gifts and talents. And it's so freeing to finally discover that, you know, yes. to understand. So in reading your chapter of the book, um, it seems that there was the child within us sometimes translates situations in a family as very different than what they probably are, or, or maybe our perception is that we're not loved and that, that continues. They, and many times our parents have, they're bringing their own, whatever happened to them when they were growing up. It, these things are generational. It passes from generation to generation. And I think part of our goal is to change what happens in a family so that it doesn't pass from generation to generation to stop that. But oftentimes our perception, there's so many little things that um, happen. It really makes you understand how important our role as adults to take care for the children of our li in our lives and to make a difference for them and to help them to know how loved they are and the words that we speak to them to be empowering for them, you know, to, to, to help them to understand their worth at a very young age because that sets in their personality and carries on for a very long time. Right. And that's where I'm much more aware with my granddaughter. Uh, I also have a grandson, but I see her more. And it's just that even the little things of how we clear these and how, you know, I know she's upset. Well, she has a right to be upset about things because she doesn't understand and how to draw her out of those things. And I also feel an added responsibility in my case because her other grandma passed away within the last year. And so there's, I, I just feel that I'm, I'm both her grandma. She has another grandma, another step grandma, but there's still, I feel the responsibility as, um, for both the other grandmother and I, that we are the example for her. Very much. And oftentimes, as a grandparent, we, we, we carry a big role because oftentimes the parents are very, very busy trying to make ends meet, trying to do all the things that they need to do, um, going through their own stuff because that's, <laughs> that's when the age when we do go through our own stuff. Um, and as a grandparent, I have nine grandchildren, and you feel a huge sense of responsibility to to pick up the pieces and that's why it's so important as families that 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 interweaving of, of support that we're there to support each other too. You know? Well and I also felt there were some things that I did as an adult. <clears throat> like my mother divorced my dad at that time and she went off. And so it's like oh when my I didn't know what to do with a mother when I was eight seventeen and eighteen and what was I doing to my own daughter at that time? It's like I'm trying not to, but I hadn't gone through everything yet. And so now it's still important to live the example I want to be for my children now so that they know that wasn't me then, that this is more who I am now. Very good. So on your healing journey, as, you're, as you make, made, started to make the decisions that you needed to make some changes, that you needed to get down to the root of what was, was – uh, the core of even your health issues and all of these other things that we're faced with because many times our health issues are a direct, direct result of our inner feelings, the inner dialogue that goes in it, it, many times with abuse. I find that a lot of the people that I have, the women that I have included in my book and other conversations with women in my Facebook groups, they have huge health issues and there's, there's a correlation there. So as you began to realize that, that there had to be some changes, that, that you needed to, to reckon and come to the place where you, you dealt with these, what resources did you tap into? Where, how did you start figuring this out? Well, first of all, it was having a relationship with a higher power. I, I, I have to put that in there because I knew I was loved, and, but I hadn't felt it yet. And so through that relationship, it's taught me how to love myself and love my family and love other people. Um, the main ones have been more recently, and that was with Healer's Blueprint. Well, I took some workshops and learned some things. One of the first things I learned about was with forgiveness, and that forgiveness was you had to let go of the emotion. And it was like, that was brand new. <laughs> 
let go of the emotion because I would feel clean for a while and then those little thoughts would come back in. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, well, haven't I gotten rid of those? But I didn't know at the time that, yes, they were gone. But I was letting them come in and how important that emotion is when those thoughts are tied with emotion. <laughs> they can hold you back down there. And so now I've also learned that when I do the positive uh, declarations or affirmations that I have them with love and joy and I feel the positive emotions with those too so that those negative ones don't have any hold on me I've replaced those with positive strong sturdy emotions that build me up so that I can build others up also with uh, the one thing I kept saying when I would pray was like you're not asking the right questions. And it was like, oh, but what are the right questions I should be asking? <laughs> <laughs> and then I got with this healer's blueprint, and it's, um, I didn't know if I left a copy. Um, and anyway, I can't show you one anyway. Maybe you can send me um, an image of that, because I can put it in our video here. Okay, and, well, good. Yeah, well, it's like it's got, it's got a central part of it, and then you, you nestle test from that, and then you keep working out. And then I started asking those questions. And I can remember one morning that I got down and I knelt in prayer and I said, oh, I'm so thankful for this healer's blueprint because it tells me that, uh, oh, the questions I need to ask myself. <laughs> <laughs> and there was just this glorious peace inside of me that, yes, I had been given this blueprint to help me. Now, sometimes the answer is not on the blueprint because... Life is bigger than this blueprint. But in the process of asking myself questions and helping others ask these questions of themselves, my intuition has grown. And so the thoughts and, and ideas and direction to take the conversation comes to me more readily. I still read a lot of different things too, and I, I juxtaposition this tool with that tool and pull in this kind of thing. And, and it's the combination of the things that I've learned that has helped me grow. Uh, sometimes when I'm working with a client, like, oh, that worked with her. I can try that on myself. <laughs> and, you know what? It works. <laughs> and so um, the Healer's Blueprint was probably one of the biggest ones. Uh, some of the, the classes I took with uh, Kurt Duncan helped me a lot also. Uh, he's three key elements .com, but it's trusting the process too. You have to believe. You have to hope. Yes, you, you have to believe and hope, and you also have to realize that because we live in this world and because so many of those feelings were deep-seated, that there will be triggers from time to time, but it's understanding that and catching those triggers so that we don't go back down. And that's what I've been working more and more at is, okay, go deeper, hold myself firm there, but to be aware of when they're starting. Because sometimes it used to be, I was like, I would finally get to this deep fun. It's like, oh, I'm going into depression and I can recognize it. And I was like, oh my, I've been going all these several days with those thoughts and I hadn't done it hadn't pulled myself out yet. So it's like, okay, I, I, I know my body wants to go in it and I'm trying, but next time I want it to be sooner. And it did. It came sooner and sooner and sooner. And so that I don't go, unless it's a major crisis. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm aware of it and I still am able to stay up above it, but other people don't know it. So I don't drop into that deep, deep depression with it. So what would you say to somebody that just starting that journey, just discovering and knowing within their core that something's got to change, that they really want to live a rich and full life, but they, they're, they're just starting that journey. What would you say to them? Well, that's exactly what happened in my Crossroads class yesterday. One of the ladies, it was her first day there. And you could still tell she was struggling, but she wanted to be there. And... Um, it was being able to look in their eyes and tell them I love you and to be able to recognize the good that's in them. And as we talk and I pull out their positive thoughts of how they want to feel, 
that we are able to, I can af affirm, I can accept, I know that that's how they feel, and that's, and then telling them, and then one lady was saying, well, I'm trying, I said, no, 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 you are that. Right now with me, you are that. You're holding that. And they, the eyes just pop open and the understanding comes that I am that right now. I can, she could feel it around herself that she was that quality right then. That she was love. She was acceptance. She was understanding. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about, and what feeling does that give you? And she said, hope. I said, yes. That's why we have to start at those basics and understand who we are and who we want to become. Correct. And we, they are one and the same. Now, yes, it's going to take some time for her to get there, but we have talked about it taking time and what my next step was going to be with them and how we were going to look at that. And they were like, yes, yes. <laughs> I could see. So basically it's learning to love ourselves through the process and being patient right. and kind to ourselves as we, as we walk and travel that road. Thank you. Yes. I knew there was something else, but <laughs> <laughs> like I got caught in the story. It was like, ah, oh, there's something else that needs to come out. So yes, thank you. Yes. That's very, very important. Very good. Well, you know, the, the reason that we put together We Choose to Thrive is because there's been, I, I think that there's not one person alive on this earth that, can, that, that escapes life without something deeply shattering that, that happens. Most of us don't go through life with just everything roses and beautiful. No. Life brings us just the fact that we're merely alive. But a lot of us will take those life situations no matter when they happened and abuse is abuse no matter what kind of the abuse it is and it, it can yes totally change our lives but many of us have like this rear view mirror type of a thing we're looking back instead of looking going forward and we live with that pain for so long it begins to saturate the cells of our body and I did it the research has shown that emotions have an energy Mm -hmm. Yes. And in that energy, um, studies have shown they have like they're a vibr vibrational scale. And in that vibrational scale, emotions such as anger and grief and fear and shame yes. rate like at 20, 30, 40, 50 on a scale. When you come to courage to say, I am going to make some changes and I have the courage to make these changes. Courage is rated at like 200. So from 20, 20, 30, 40, 50 up to 200, that's a huge change. Then love is rated at um, five, 300, 500. 550, I thought. Or 550. Yeah, 550. Yeah. So by the time you get to 550, and, but you've gone through courage, courage to stand up and courage to make the changes that you need to do, then, then love then acceptance, acceptance is the next bit as you go up, and then the love, and then it goes on beyond that. But what the studies also show is that as we change ourselves, that can change, has the potential to change thousands and thousands of others just by changing our own vibrational frequencies and yes. beginning to heal. That is our responsibility as, as individuals in our world, that as we make our changes and as we accept those changes to to be the force of change in the world and yes. Yes. and as we do that each one of us that do this and there's many many beginning to realize this there's there's a lot of voices being spoken right now to change this world because what is our, our alternative you know we have choices here and as right. each one of us individually quietly it doesn't mean we have to go conquer the world no, changing who we are within in a, in a way that we love and accept ourselves and then we treat those that we love and those that we come in contact with with that same kind of love that we want to be and, and acceptance that we want to like be accepted. golden rule treat others right. like do us to others yes and so thank you do you have any other shop thoughts that you wish to share with yes one other major one that really 
helped me and I can feel it now as even I now the story is done it's ready to go in your book you to go out to the world or wherever it goes to the people that need it right um it was create it's creating a new story and so as I'm remembering now the things with my dad, even with the spanking and all that kind of stuff, I have the vision that he was doing the best he could. And he thought he was doing it out of love for me to train me. And all these other things, and even with my mother and, and other things that happened, and even because of the mindset that happened with bosses, <laughs> because of my mindset, it's okay. I have a beautiful view of that story. The pain is gone. The memory is still there, but it's just a very light. It's in light because it made me who I am today. Exactly. Very much. And there's something to be said. If we just forgot completely what happened, then we lose the, the value of the, what we're, we were supposed to learn. The lessons that we needed. The life lessons. And so, so when we look at it in that perspective, we don't forget. But the power it, that those things have, have over us changes. And so it becomes a memory that becomes maybe a little bit more distant, but softer and kinder yes. and gentler. Well, you know? I think it helps us understand when other people have their problems. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know when people have talked with people and I went, whoa. Their stuff is so much worse than what I had to go through, but I don't absorb it. Right. I just can accept that that's part of their journey right. and love them. I don't hurt for them because of the hurt they went through. I can love them and hold them with acceptance and pure love in my heart. And that's what they need at that moment. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking part in our We Choose to Thrive series. It's, it's something that it, right now we're right about 52 women that have stepped up between the two books that in the first, the first in the series, this is the second. And to see the courage and the changes in each one of their lives that has taken place because they have had the courage to stand up and speak up is amazing. So thank you for you having the love and the courage to do the same. Well, thank you for <laughs> meeting you <laughs> so that we can have those conversations that led to my writing this. I am so grateful. And I love you very much. And I love the work that you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for watching this We Choose to Thrive interview. If you are currently in an abusive situation, please seek help immediately. Our purpose in creating this book and video series is to form a sisterhood of support. Know that abuse is abuse no matter what kind it is. The stories in this We Choose to Thrive series are as many and varied as the people in it. If this resonates with you, we welcome you and invite you to join us. If you know someone who would benefit from hearing this interview, please feel free to share.